Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. I'm in my home workshop tonight and we're going to do a little job on this uh, Ansonia clock. It's a circa 1910 uh, mantle clock. Quite a nice design. Looks like it's probably um, American oak. Very Edwardian design here. So I'd say around about 1900 to 1910. But look, it really doesn't make a lot of difference. These clocks aren't worth what they used to be, unfortunately. The uh, the time of the antique clock being worth a lot of money, I think, is well past. But they're good to get going. Um, and this one's very typical of a clock that won't run. It basically hasn't been served uh, serviced for a long time. Let's turn it around and have a look. And with this video, I'm just going to show you sort of a bit of a, a hack on servicing a clock without going to the expense of of pulling it right down and cleaning it all in an ultrasonic cleaner and then reassembling it and it's very time consuming and if you take it to a clock repairer most of them will charge you a lot more than what the clock's worth and that's not really their fault it's it's a labor intensive job you can see this one both the springs are wound fully uh, someone would probably call it overwound uh, it's a term that gets thrown around a bit but I, I've explained that in another video it really isn't an accurate term they're both wound up fully so they're not overwound overwound would indicate something's broken um, but it's bound up and it won't operate I had the pendulum on it before and it should actually run without the pendulum and it's not it's just bound up um, what happens is the old oil in there basically turns to a gum and it just stops things running smoothly and then, of course, people get in there and spray CRC and all sorts of stuff, which doesn't do it any good at all. So we're going to pull the movement out, give it a bit of a wash up, and I'll show you how to just clean it and re-oil it without dismantling. And uh, we should be able to get it going unless there's a breakage somewhere. So we need to get the movement out of the housing. And the first thing, well, I've already done it, the pendulum's off here. And in fact, unless your clock's actually running or or a decorative piece that doesn't get moved, the pendulum shouldn't really be on there. If you transport a clock, always take the pendulum off. It just saves any damage happening. It can damage this suspension spring. And of course, it just sort of swings around and hits things, which doesn't do anything any good. So we'll take the pendulum off. Now, we'll, there's basically a few screws that hold the movement into the casing. But before we undo those, we need to come around to the front and take the hands off so this one has a, a door that swings uh, and it looks like the hinge on the door is pretty sad too we might see if we can do something with that actually it looks like it's not even connected oh yeah there's a screw going through there we'll check that out later and it looks like someone's actually glued the glass back in it might not even be the original glass so that's a bit shonky Anyway, we'll um, get the clock running first. Now, some of them have a little pin through. This one's actually got a threaded collar. I'm not sure how tight it would be. Yeah, it's not too bad. There we go. I can undo it with my fingers. So just a little threaded collar there. And the minute hand will just lift straight off. They're usually on two flat sides. I think you can see the shape of that there. So when you locate them on, they can go that way or they can go 180 degrees round. And we'll talk about setting the time when we get the thing back together. Now the hour hand just presses on and that doesn't have a flat side so that that can actually spin. It's just a press fit and it's usually fairly loose so that it can spin if you need to. So sometimes you do need pliers to gently get them off. So now you've got the winders here and any clock you see with two winders just simply means it's a striker. It won't play chimes. Uh, one winder will be to wind the mainspring for the clock mechanism and the other winder will wind the spring for the chimes. And if you see a clock with three winders, then you know there's not only a chime that counts the hour, but there's also a, um, a musical chime like Westminster chimes. So there's your two main springs. So there's nothing else to take off the front. We'll just lay it down. We'll rest it on a towel or something so we don't damage the front. And we'll undo these screws. Okay, so I've got it laying on a towel. 
we've got wood screws to get out this one's pretty easy to access uh, some movements uh, you only have a small door and they're sort of way inside so they can be a little bit awkward to get out and others you will see the screws have put in been put in numerous spots over the years to get the movement in the right position so every clock seems to be different it's a good idea to have a, a magnetized screwdriver because uh, you do need to reach down and especially putting the screws back in now I just noticed something and I don't know if you saw it under my fingers look at the oil there so this has been well and truly over oiled in fact the the whole back plate here is quite sticky so someone's um, thought they were doing the right thing or at least thought they knew what they were doing and they've over oiled it and I don't know what sort of oil they've used but it certainly gummed everything up so there's only four screws and we get this movement out um, it's written on there I'm not sure if you can read that on the camera it says Ansonia Clock Company USA New York um, and it actually has a patent date here too which I can't quite read it but remember the patent date is when the idea or the the design was patented so if you have a patent date of say 1890 that doesn't mean your clock dates from the 1890 it it means that that's when the design was registered and they might have used the same design for two or three decades all right so that should come out now as i said really easy to get these movements out um I'll grab all these screws before they fall off but this movement is quite sticky with old oil uh, and it certainly needs a good wash up first so the case is pretty good other than that front door uh, the rest of the case looks fine so there's no issues there we can put that aside until we get the movement working properly so now back to this movement i've just been having a good look at it everything looks in reasonably good order uh, I can't see any excessive wear to the holes, although it's sometimes a bit hard to see unless you actually dismantle them. It's a pretty big job to take these plates apart and to pull all the gears out and then inspect it all, clean out all the holes, reassemble it, oil it. It's a very labour-intensive job. So we're going to try and short-circuit it he here. It's a bit of a hack, as I said. Uh, the chimes part of the mechanism works as you can see there I just knocked a little trigger and away she goes and that's the hammer that strikes the gong in the bottom of the clock so that seems to be working fine um, but it certainly will benefit from a good clean out um, I've been noticing especially down the bottom where it was resting overnight it's got a lot of oil draining down there so it certainly uh, hasn't been well looked after so what we're going to do now is we're going to basically degrease the whole clock or the whole movement and what I'm going to do is I've got a little ice cream container we'll put it in there and we'll pour some petrol in now petrol or gasoline depending on where you're from is a very volatile solvent and highly flammable so you do have to be extremely careful doing this I'd strongly recommend doing it outside because the fumes are quite strong and also if you have any form of ignition like a spark or a pilot light you're asking for major trouble so you you do have to treat this with a lot of respect uh, but it is a very good solvent it will dissolve all the old oil brilliantly and it'll free up the work the movement I'm going to leave that soak for a, a few hours then I'll get a little fine paintbrush and just clean around all the arbors and everything and get in around the springs. I probably should have actually released the springs first, but we can we can see how we go there. Um, but yes, look, this is probably not recommended by um, clock purists, but it certainly works really well um, as long as you're super careful. And I probably should have gloves on. If you're doing it a lot, you really do need to protect yourself from the solvent. But uh, I find it's a good option. It's relatively cheap, it's easy to get. Uh, you just need to treat it with respect. I've left this soak overnight actually and I gave it a bit of a brush around and I turned it up the other way for a little while. So it should have dissolved a lot of the oil. It should have freed things up. And a lot of times 
you pull them out of a, a bath like this and they almost start ticking straight away. Just depends what part was gummed up. If the main springs have a lot of oil in them, well, they really need to be let down and washed out properly. So it doesn't always fix it. It just depends how, how gummy they were. What do we got? Oh, look at that. There you go. So that's freed things up really well. All I've done is given it a little bit of a brush around with a little paintbrush, but that gives me an indication that it's going to work perfectly fine. Excellent. So I'm going to let that dry out naturally. I'll just put it outside and leave it dry. Petrol evaporates pretty quickly. Um, I'm not going to hit it with the, compressor, the air compressor because all I'm going to do then is create clouds of volatile gas. Oxygen and fuel vapor is, um, is bad news. So I'll leave it dry outside for a while. It looks like it's going to run beautifully without us having to let the springs down. It, as I said right at the start, this is a bit of a hack. If you wanted to service a clock properly, it would be worth certainly letting the springs down, making sure they're clean in there. And if you want to do a really thorough job and you're going to keep the clock for a long time, go to the trouble to learn how to dismantle the whole thing and clean out all the arbor holes. But this is a quick fix and it works works quite well. The important thing though is that it's now totally dry with regards to lubrication and we do need to make sure we get it all oiled properly or it's going to wear out. Look at this, happily drying away outside. It's a cloudy day here but it's still warm enough and it's ticking away merrily. Now without the pendulum they will unwind the spring much quicker. The pendulum is actually a basically a regulator. It regulates the speed of the clock so without a pendulum they will run super fast and I think generally they'll do something like an hour in about 15 minutes so um, it probably depends on the clock anyway that's uh, looks like the movements in good condition it's running nicely even lying on its side which a lot of clocks won't run on their side no, there you go it stopped now but we'll leave that dry and then we'll give it a good oil now I have actually let these springs down um, I wasn't going to do this because this whole video is really just aimed at someone wanting to fix their grandma's clock and not get into too much detail. But given that the power from the springs drives everything and that is often where they bind up, uh, I thought we really should let them down and give it a bit of a clean. So if you're going to try and let your springs down at home, don't just use the key. If you take the pressure on that and release the little pull in there, you won't be able to hold this key. It will start, you might hold it for a start and the moment you let it turn, it's going to bruise your fingers. It'll probably take skin off. The springs have a lot of power and they'll unwind very quickly. So I've made a let down tool here. All I've done is an old key that was a bit damaged on the, the top part. I've fitted it to the bottom of an old screwdriver. And I might do a separate video on how to make one of these. And there's also another trick you can use for a home letdown uh, setup. Um, so at least with my hand on this grip, I can control how the spring releases. And it's it's a, then a gradual unwinding rather than explosive force. So we've, we have unwound the springs, uh, taken the pressure off them. I've washed them out as best I can. It's still a lot easier than dismantling the whole movement. And again, the idea of this video is just so that you can fix your own. If you want to go into uh, fixing clocks for other people, you certainly need to learn how to use it, do it properly. Um, now, we need to oil the springs. And there are a multitude of different ideas on this. And if you look on clock forums, um, I think I saw someone write that for every expert his opinion has an equal and opposite opinion from another expert. So some people uh, proclaim using a silicon-based grease. Uh, some say a heavier oil, like an engine oil. There are special clock oils. But given that this is just for a, a home attempt and you won't have the right special um, products handy, we're going to just use a little bit of heavy-grade engine oil, nice and clean, we're not going to use very much and we're just going to use a little brush. You can use a um, very small bottle brush or something with fine fibers and we don't want very much. And mainly we're kind of painting it on the outside, but we can get a little bit in on the leaves. And what I'm going to do is just put a little bit on here 
from both sides and then we're just going to wind the spring up again and that will help distribute it around the leaves of the spring but the for the springs to release even power they need to slip and that's why they clearly need to be lubricated but also you need to clean out the gunk as best you can now given that this movement actually worked after our petrol wash I don't think there's going to be too much gunk in there but um, we certainly need to lubricate it because it'll be dry so I'll do the other side and then we'll wind them up and let them down again and that should distribute the oil around the leaves of the spring and all we need to do then is to lubricate all these other points and we won't use the engine oil for that we'll use a, uh, a, a lighter grade oil now that's finished uh, lubricating the main springs as I wound them up I would um, just brush a little bit of extra oil in because it loosens the outer spring as you wind it it tightens the inner part and when we've got it almost fully wound it then squeezes out any excess and we can wipe that off to keep it nice and clean you don't want oil dripping out from the bottom of your main springs it's just going to make a mess in the in the clock casing so they're done now we just need to lube all these other points uh, and what we do there is all these little bushes or um, points that where the ends of the cogs run through and pivot. Uh, I had a good look at this now that it was clean and they do have a little bit of wear in them. And I've used a toothpick. I haven't got one right with me at the moment. But I've just used a point of a sharp toothpick just to clean out any obvious gunk. But the petrol really did a great job on cleaning all those up. So now they're dry and we need to lubricate all them. And I'm using just... A tiny little oiler it's like a hollow needle very fine you can actually see a drop of oil that's just tracked along it there and I could just put one drop of oil on my thumbnail there and that's maximum you would need on these bushes um, what you'll find is if you over oil is often worse than not enough oil because if you put a big blob of oil on there and that's remember that's vertical it's going to start to drip down the back of the case and when it starts to run it actually sucks all the rest of the oil out of the bush and it basically empties the bush whereas just a little drop is going to stay in there and there won't be enough to actually run so hopefully we're focused here and I just put a little drop in there it soaks around into the bearing that's all you need now, the oil I'm using here is a light grade oil. You guys at home that just want to fix your family clock aren't going to have a special clock oil. I like to use a sewing machine oil, a good quality uh, machine oil. It's light and uh, it will do the job fine for your home clock. So I just need to go around and put one little dot on all these little pivots and then we're just about ready to assemble it. Okay, two more things to mention before we put it back in the cabinet. These little needle oilers you can pick up on eBay really cheap. Uh, I think you get a pack of four or something. I don't know. I don't remember, but they are cheap. Uh, they're almost disposable, but they work really well. If you couldn't be bothered or you simply don't want to buy anything to do your job, you could equally just use a normal needle and just dip it in some oil and just put a drop in each place. It's essentially just a manual method. Uh, that would work fine. Remember that we don't want to see any drips. If you've got dripping oil anywhere, you've got too much. Um, what else did I have to mention? Ah, oh, yes, the other thing is just oil the pivot points or the bushings and the springs, as we've discussed. Don't oil the gears or the cogs or whether they mesh because they're all brass construction and it's not designed to be oiled. They should be running dry. Uh, if you oil all those, you're just going to end up with a big mess. And of course, oil will attract dust and then you have almost a grinding paste. So definitely don't oil any of the cogs, just all the, the bushing points. And we're ready to put this one back in. The movement's back in the case. Um, I'm not going to put the pendulum on just yet. One thing to check is you might have to make sure the hammer still lines up with the gong because we've had the movement out and often the wire gets bent. But that seems to be about right. All right, we'll turn it over and put the hands on and then we'll just get the times right because we don't know what time the clock is actually up to and we have to have it striking 
counting the right number of course. Look at this thing go, it's like a runaway train at the moment. So it's just itching to get back to work. Now I've taken the door off because I have to do a little soldering job on it and I don't have a large soldering iron here at the moment but just the uh, the tag that holds the door the solders let go so I have to take the face off and I can resolder that at some stage but we won't worry about that for this video. Now we need to put the hands on and the hour hand can just press on. It doesn't really matter where, we'll set that in a minute. There we go, that's pushed on nicely. So that will actually spin. So we can adjust that to where it needs to be. Now the minute hand, we need to see where the clock's up to. So we'll put it on, get those flat sides lined up so it's locked on. And we'll just turn it until we get to a chiming position. So just one chime. So that's either half past something or it's one o'clock. So let's go to the bottom. Now you can wind a clock forward, but you shouldn't wind it backwards. All right, that's the half past. And again, that's one stroke. So that must be half past. If we bring it around to the top again, we should probably have two gongs for two o'clock. Two o'clock, okay. So we can now widen the hour hand back around to two o'clock. We're a little bit after. And we'll just fine tune that once it runs in for a bit. And that set it. So you don't want to hand wind the minute hand backwards at all, but you can wind it forwards. And the hour hand we can spin in any direction. So there we go. We just need to put the pendulum back on and regulate the speed because at the moment it's just flying. Oh, and I had to put the collar back on. So I've done that. And she's certainly ticking quite loudly in here. And there's no sign of it stopping. All that degunking and fresh oil. If I do stop it, it starts very easily. Right, so let's hang the pendulum. And it just simply, on these clocks, it just simply hangs on a hook. And the adjuster for this pendulum is down the bottom. And you'll see it actually says, oh, shush for a minute. It says S and F, which is slow and fast. But generally, the longer the pendulum, the slower will the clock will run. And the shorter the pendulum, the faster it will run. Some of them have a grub screw underneath. Some of them actually have a control up in the movement. But uh, essentially, it regulates the speed. And you'll see that's a much more agreeable sound. Now, it's also the beat's a little bit out, so we have to adjust that. My bench should be perfectly level here. And if you can hear that, it's kind of it's kind of ticking with a limp. Um, so one side the dwells a bit longer than the other, and we can just bend the crutch wire here to adjust that. But I won't go into too much detail there. The main purpose of this video was to show you how to free up uh, an old clock that hasn't been serviced for a long time or has been drenched in the wrong oil or just just neglected, basically. And we've done that. She's running beautifully. So I'll just fix up the beat here and I'll monitor the time to make sure it's not gaining or losing and I'll adjust the pendulum to suit. So I've just fixed the beat. It probably sounds a bit better. It does to me. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you got a little bit out of this. I'm by no means a clock expert. Uh, there's plenty of YouTube channels and specialist uh, forums for clock repairs and there's a lot to learn about them. I just know the basics and I can usually get things going. Uh, and the whole idea of my channel is to teach you some basic skills and give you enough information to uh, maybe save things from being consigned to landfill or thrown out because they no longer work. Now this repair job for me is well worthwhile in that I can now sell it as a serviced clock. Uh, it runs well, it will keep good time and uh, whoever buys it through my shop will, will have something they can actually use. Whereas before I would have had to sell it as uh, needs repair and the value drops enormously. So thank you for watching again. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye.